Welcome for those of you that are joining. We're going to give everybody a couple minutes to get settled and joined into the session. We'll get started here right at the top of the hour. So just another minute or so. Okay, I think we're gonna get started. We've got quite a few participants. Um, thank you so much for joining today's session inside Higher Ed's webinar, Creating Better Student Experiences with Virtual Lines. We're thrilled to have you here today. I wanted to first introduce our speakers, myself. I'm Kelly Kleiner and I'm the Director of Sales here for QLIS in higher education. Uh, second, we have Christian Mangugu a business expert for Inno Info Service, the Department of Student Affairs, as well as Leanne Hupe, business analyst in information technology. Both of those folks are representatives of the University of Ottawa. We're doing a co-presentation today. So first let's talk about just a quick agenda of what the session's going to cover. I'll go through a QLIS introduction so you can learn a little bit about who we are. And then I'm going to turn it over to the Ottawa representatives who are going to go over University of Ottawa at a glance, their implementation and so forth, their vision, objective, scope, the pandemic. We have to cover that, of course. Um, their project governance process, timelines and results. And then I'm also going to do a quick QList demo. OK, so let's do a quick QList intro. First, I thought I would start by sharing some logos of the universities we're pleased to partner with. Um, I'm sure a lot of those stand out, some very recognizable, some maybe not so much. Um, what's great about what we do here at QLIS first is that we specialize in higher education. But I think maybe some of the logos on here are representative of not only very large four-year universities, but also large, medium, and small um, community colleges, as well as sometimes maybe a very small technical school. Um, QLIS has the great opportunity of working with all different sizes of higher education institutions. It really comes down to a college's need to be able to deliver student services efficiently. So I wanted to share that with you first. So let's talk about virtual queuing. Some of you may or may not be familiar. Um, with what a platform like ours does. So I wanna give a, a quick description. So virtual queuing software allows students to join a line from anywhere on campus. Students are given a customized forecasted wait time and important updates about their place in line. They get notifications and regular updates to let students know as they move to the front of a queue. And if you look at this screenshot here of a cell phone, this is an example of some of the notifications a student may receive while they're waiting in queue. QList, by the way, is also 100% web-based. So we are in the cloud hosted on Amazon Web Services. Some of the great features that QList has. Flex appointments is one. So certainly at our core, QList is a queue management solution. That's what we've been doing since 2007. But in addition to that, we can also be a scheduling tool and we call our appointments flex appointments. Um, they are very flexible. Um, the first thing is students can choose the date and time that works for them and QList takes care of the rest. 
the system will automatically integrate appointments with walk-in so everyone gets the help they need. And an important note here is that if you're an advisor, let's say, and you have students that are joining queues as drop-ins or scheduling appointments, both of those types of visits are integrated in the same single pane of glass. So your staff isn't having to toggle back and forth between systems to see where are my appointments, who are my walk-ins, everyone is listed together. This also allows for greater predictability so that you can better manage your resources. Second great feature is two-way communication. This is a very unique thing that QList does. Um, is not only are we sending them notifications and updates, but they have an opportunity to send responses back by using commands on their phone. So they have the ability to ask for more time. If they're running late, they can push themselves back. They could leave a queue or get out of a line. They could also cancel an appointment all from their mobile phone, or they could even ask for a status update and get a current wait time just by texting through their mobile device. If a student leaves the queue or asks for more time, the system intelligently moves other students further ahead. It's very intuitive. SMS survey. This is a really fun feature that QList has been doing for the last several years. And what we're doing is a post-visit survey uh, feedback collection from students. So when they finish interacting with someone on your staff, their final message can be, you know, great to see you today. We'd love to get your feedback. So these real-time surveys allow you to harvest critical data about the student experience, gain valuable insights to ensure excellent service, and determine what works well and what changes are required in order to drive higher student satisfaction rates. And just so you understand the way that that's working, that's not a QList survey. Um, we like to keep it open so all of our college partners can create their own. Of course, you know best what questions you want to ask. And that can vary by department within a college as well and can also change throughout a year. Um, what QList is, is the vehicle of delivery. Since we're already texting with those students, you know, getting them to see you in an efficient way, their final message can be that great to see you today. We'd love to, to hear from you. What colleges are excited about and what they have found is this really has proven to be the most guaranteed way to have a student give it to you is if you send it in an SMS right when they finish. Tracking and reporting. Data is king, um, as I've learned by talking to all of you for so many years. And I'm always surprised at how limited data can be in some cases. So certainly one of the most valuable deliverables that you'll get from QList is analytics and reporting. Um, gives you the, the ability to understand key metrics and statistics such as average wait times, number of students seen, the reasons they were there, how long those visits take, and there's many, many other metrics that are provided. You can then use this data to better manage resources and make data-driven decisions about your student service operations. And I want to pause for just a second and describe the three different options you have for reporting. The first one is kind of this image that you're seeing here, the QList dashboard. This is a real-time reporting interface for management to be able to log in from anywhere and see the highlights of what's happening in their queues. It'll give you the information about the current wait time, how long your service times are, how many students have been seen, how many are waiting and so forth. Even a step further than that, which is very, very useful during peak times, of course, um, is that those managers can also get their own text message alerts that will tell you things about those break in trends. So if you have a normal wait time that's maybe no longer than an hour, let's just use that as an example, that manager can get a text message if that wait time goes longer. Or that can also be around a service time if your service times are taking a bit longer. We can send notifications. So really great way, great way for managers to manage from anywhere. So that's live reporting. Then we also have historical reports, of course, accessible the next business day that give you all sorts of metrics around, you know, some of the things I mentioned already, wait times, number of students seen, why they were there, how long those visits took. There can even be employee metrics in there around, um, you know, each individual employee and how long it took them to see students. Um, and much, much more. So there's historical reports. And then we just released um, a new reporting feature just a couple of weeks ago, actually, called the Daily Scene. And this is going to be really, um, really exciting for higher education specifically, I believe. So the Daily Scene is an email, uh, excuse me, a report that we will email to you, anybody in management, 
that will give you some really key metrics automatically. Instead of going into the reporting interface and manipulating data to get what you want, we'll have it already compiled in a report and send it to you. And that can include students that were there, who they saw, why, how long, and so forth. So there's really a lot of reporting options with QList. Some key differentiators. Um, of course, we're not the only queue management solution out there, but what we are is certainly known to be the ones that specialize in higher education. So keep that in mind. But we have mobile apps. So one of the really unique things that QList does is an omni-channel experience. And so what that means is we have a variety of ways for students to be able to see wait times or appointment availability and join or schedule from anywhere. And that's kind of a big deal is making it very accessible for students. So an app is one of those ways. So I would encourage all of you to download QList on your phones at some point. Um, whether you have an iOS or Android device, you'll find QList with excellent ratings, by the way. But students have the opportunity to join, uh, see wait times, join queues, schedule appointments, and then they get their reminders in the app as opposed to SMS. The second is AI forecasting. QList has a very unique approach to forecasting our wait times. We are built with AI using learning algorithms to do that. There's a lot that goes into it that I can certainly explain to each of you individually if you'd like to have a personal um, demonstration with me, but it really looks at historical and live information to get you know, those accurate times. No physical cues. So there are some queue management companies out there that still are doing more of a uh, in-person experience in terms of you can come in here and get into a queue, but don't go anywhere because we don't use a mobile platform. QList doesn't believe in that. Our mission has always been to eliminate physical lines from around the globe. We want students to have the ability to use their time the way that they want and be virtually tethered to your lobby. We stay engaged with them, sending them SMS messages, and of course, ultimately telling them when to come back that it's their turn. So no physical lines here at QList. The data and the analytics reporting, we just kind of covered that, but that's a really, a really big part of what we do. The customization, or I should say configuration, QList is a really flexible software platform. Um, configurable by each institution and also the departments within each university or college. Um, if you looked inside at University of Ottawa as an example, they have many, many departments using QLIS. None of them look the same. In fact, it might be hard for you to tell that they're actually in the same college. So keep that in mind is that financial aid, registrar, admissions, maybe it's a one step. Everybody has their own configuration and student journey. API integrations, we're very open architecture software sitting on several hundred REST-based APIs, making it a little more easy to create any kind of interface. So what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Leanne so she can talk about University of Ottawa. Thank you, Kelly. Um, the University of Ottawa, uh, we've been founded since uh, 1848. Our population is quite extensive. We have about 44,000 students and growing. 20% um, of our student population are international students. So still um, a substantial amount. We have 10 faculties. We're the largest um, bilingual French and English university in the world. We're very proud of that, um, of that as well. We are close to the proximity of the federal government in the national capital region. Uh, we're also part of a dynamic and growing center for research-driven innovation and development and leading edge technologies. So we have many uh, partnerships as well uh, in the high-tech uh, area. Um, we started looking for uh, a platform because we were um, having some challenges and we were receiving uh, feedback. Our undergraduate studies offices were receiving an average of 45,000 visits and 15,000 appointments per year. Um, the students entering the queues to request services and to book appointments were facing long wait times, especially during peak periods, uh, September, January. Uh, some students had to wait for hours on site before being able to talk to someone, often, you know, 
ranging from an hour to four and a half hours. Um, they couldn't they couldn't go anywhere as Kelly as Kelly mentioned. You know, you had to wait in line if if you if you left the line, you would miss your turn and have to come back. Um, not an efficient process whatsoever, but one that was established uh, over the years, and. Um, uh, the high in-person wait line dropout rates uh, were very, very high in January and September during those peak periods. So this was stats from 2019, but um, those are pretty accurate as well. Um, from a student's perspective, we wanted to allow students to request services remotely. I mean, times change and students, um, you know, have all pretty much have all phones. Uh, we wanted to add flexibility for the students to better manage their wait time, uh, especially taking into account their schedules, their workload. Um, they, we wanted them to have the, um, being easily capable of booking appointments with advisors without having to either be redirected or send numerous emails, wait for follow-ups. Um, there was room to improve uh, visibility on estimated wait times, places in queue for students. All of, all of the factors that um, were in, in, in place in, in terms of in enhancing our existing process. Uh, this was a good opportunity for us to uh, look into a platform and look into a way where we can provide better service virtually and allow students to be able to manage their wait times accordingly and direct them to the appropriate service or agent without having to uh, give them a, a runaround of, of services. So our, our goal was to provide a common platform and standardized processes across uh, service locations, uh, faculties as well. From a staff's perspective, we heard their challenges as well. Um, they wanted a better way to manage lineups and appointments for their undergraduate offices, uh, wanted to be able to reduce the stress um, that they were facing in, in terms of looking at these lineups of students that were waiting in person and being able to efficiently and quickly service their requests. They also wish to have, as Kelly mentioned, they have numerous, we have numerous systems uh, at the university. So to be able to streamline and standardize the student appointment booking process with an advisor was very important. Um, and also to facilitate their planning and assignments to, to, to meet the demand um, is also was critical for the employees. So to overall to improve efficiency and transfers between queues and services. And not, like I mentioned, um, you know, being able to redirect a student efficiently and quickly uh, is also an important factor in enhancing the student experience at the university. So our vision objectives and scope, I'll get into that a little bit. So our vision was to um, provide a common student experience, and this implies that processes, procedures, and tools are standardized across all faculties. Um, this is a vision, um, and we are quite on our way to, to accomplishing that uh, using this platform. Um, we wanted to also offer self-service via mobile automated experience. Um, that was the desired model as well. We wanted to have a vanilla type implementation to support long-term maintainability of the solution. So very little to no customization was our, our vision and uh, only configurations as much as we could. Uh, we were looking for a cloud-based uh, cloud solution to accelerate installation deployment and make it easier to maintain in the long run. So those were all factors that were very important to us when we were looking for a platform, queue management platform. So our initial scope of the project, we started in the fall of 2019. And our scope was to implement a central automated platform for nine undergraduate studies offices only. That was the initial scope. Um, installation, configuration of physical and virtual service points to request services, track status, and checking. So everything that came with the queue management platform, whether it was a physical kiosk, um, that was all included in the scope as well. And because we use uh, SSO here at the university, we had to ensure as well that uh, authentication integration with staff calendars and logins uh, were important as well. Out of scope back in the fall of 2019 uh, was the deployment to other faculties and offices. 
and campus services. So our initial scope was just the nine undergraduate studies offices, and then we were going to take the, a phased approach and then go from there. Um, we weren't looking to do any data migration or integration with other of our existing platforms, and also um, any integration with uh, our CRM or, our co or corporate uh, solutions as well. It was not required initially. And then the pandemic um, hit and we started to think we were in the RFP process towards we had a solution in mind and then we had to readjust the way that we were going to provide service. So students at that time during the pandemic, different faculties were using different uh, systems to connect with students. So Adobe Connect, they were using chat, uh, Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Um, so there was a little bit of like uh, inconsistencies between the different tools that faculties were using. Um, students had no indication of the waiting times as well, and appointments were limited and complicated to book through the numerous email exchanges or forms that uh, the faculties had to, uh, to use. So a bit of context, we were faced with a situation where we had to find and, and lock in an innovative and flexible uh, platform. Um, we wanted to have make sure that we had buy in from all the faculties to implement new ways of serving students and need to adapt our implementation to support virtual meetings. Um, so we had to review our internal solutions with all of our faculties and services, see what worked best for them and see if we can implement more of a standardized approach. Um, we also had a change in priorities. So we, we noticed that a lot of our faculties during the pandemic went to appointment bookings as well. So as Kelly mentioned, there was the walkings and the appointment bookings. The appointment bookings became very, very popular at that time. We're now switching back to a little bit of 50-50 of both. Um, and we needed to accelerate deployment. So we, we needed to find a way where we needed to accelerate deployment of all of these locations so they can service uh, the students virtually. And um, we uh, also had to ensure that we had a great collaboration with our vendor um, because within these tight timelines, uh, we had to work, make sure that we expedited uh, many of the deployments of our locations. Um, to do all this lofty goals and objectives, we set up pro uh, a project governance and our organiza organizational chart is as follows. I won't get into it, but um, we have the vendor technical lead, the vendor, we have our group here we, um, uh, with an application manager, business analyst, quality assurance, and then our business team lead. Uh, which was we coordinated with our business need, team lead to deploy uh, the different uh, faculties. Let's go through quickly our process, timeline, and results. So, how did we achieve this? by con consulting with other universities who implemented the solution. So we, um, we reached out to a few of our uh, colleagues in other universities to understand how they were using QLIS and any of the challenges or um, any you know, tips on, on, on how to implement things differently. Um, that was very useful. We had a close collaboration between all stakeholders. So the Office of the Provo, IT, faculties were involved, procurement, facilities, making sure we identify all of the uh, important stakeholders to help us uh, with this deployment. Um, we met with all of the faculties as well to understand their current process and their needs and challenges, and then go from there to build on providing them the best solution, the best configurations to meet their individual needs and challenges. And then the flexibility to deploy differently and adjust as needed. So as we went along and we deployed one location at a time, we worked closely with the faculties to be able to adjust accordingly. Um, and that was a, a very important um, exercise to do from the onset of the deployment all the way through onboarding new users to use QLIS and to just keep the rapport going in order to adjust as we go. And we built a strong partnership with the vendor, was, which was crucial as well. Our timeline, this is our timeline. Uh, 
you can see the pandemic hit, we had to readjust, uh, go virtual, completely virtual. And then in the summer time frame, when things, um, the restrictions relaxed a little bit, the faculties were, were preparing to perhaps go uh, a bit on uh, in person in September, October. So we worked with all of our different uh, stakeholders and our faculties in order to get them toward, to move towards more of a hybrid model. So a virtual and in-person uh, using QLIS. And we are still continuing to onboard locations in this uh, new, in this new reality. And we are into phase two now, and I'll get into phase two, which is onboarding more locations uh, as, we, as we continue to implement uh, QLIS in, in faculties and services. We had some challenges during the implementation. Um, so of course, the pandemic uh, and the remote, remote work. So many of our employees were now working virtually and the students were taking their online courses virtually. So we switched to that model completely and adjusted accordingly. Um, we had a staff strike as well in the fall of 2020. So a lot of our employees in the faculties were not available. Um, so that um, put a delay on our implementation. Uh, we had also a change of staff along the project as well, um, and uh, we adjusted accordingly as well. And uh, we built a dedicated and operational support team, which was, as I mentioned, really crucial in terms of being able that when a faculty employee um, has difficulties using the platform or onboarding or for training, we were easily uh, accessible to them. So overall, uh, our project, uh, our deployments were on time and on budget. We did enhance collaboration with faculties and services, and we received excellent feedback from students and staff who, as they started using the platform, um, they were providing um, us some feedback and uh, students overall really liked using the uh, the QLIS um, platform. Some even said like, why didn't we use this before? Uh, this is game changer for us. We can, you know, virtually just join a queue or, or book an appointment and from our phones. And this is so much easier. So uh, we were happy that um, it, 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 it was providing a good experience for our students and our staff as well. Uh, here is a um, just um, a uh, our uh, sorry uh, academic service coordinator in the Faculty of Engineering. This is some of her feedback that she provided. Um, so getting continuing to get positive feedback from students uh, who claim that their experience is enjoyable. The tool gives them much more accessibility in terms of appointment management and gives them transparency on waiting times in the queue. So if they're waiting in line and they want to go to Starbucks or you know they have time, they have 30 minutes, they know it gives them that flexibility, which is which is so so important. Um, they are happy that we have found a system that allows us to move virtually. So um, you know, with the pandemic and everything, it kind of like forced us into that new reality, which probably would have taken a little bit longer if the pandemic didn't hit. Um, so I will now introduce um, my colleague, Christian Mangugu. He is the info service business expert uh, at Student Affairs, and he, they implemented uh, QLIS in the beginning of September. So just remember that was our peak period, and I will uh, let Christian share his experience. Thanks, Lian, and um, also thanks to both uh, QLess and Insire Ayahead for this opportunity to, to share on what has been the experience at Info Service since we started using QLess uh, as our customer flow management system in the beginning of September. So um, maybe for a little bit of context, um, so Info Service operates under the Students Affairs Department, uh, where it serves as a front desk for many services such as registrar, uh, financial aid, bursaries, tuition fees, and many other. And um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Due to that nature of our business, we are pretty much a pre pretty busy service, like all year long. Uh, just for example. Uh, a normal day of work is uh, maybe 30 to 50 visits uh, in persons. And when we also take into account emails, 
calls and it's, we can top up to 200 interaction per day. And uh, also being the front line for many services, we are uh, often called to assume new function temporarily for uh, maybe a, another department or uh, another faculty. And uh, this require an ability to uh, operate, to, to, to adapt our operations uh, in order to accommodate the needs of those, um, those services, of course. And that's where um, QLS came to make uh, a big difference in terms of students' experience and also employee uh, experience. Um, so on the side of the students, what we are hearing is that being able to request your services uh, in advance remotely um, can really have to uh, save a lot of time. Uh, as my colleagues, Leanne was mentioning before, um, you have a pretty packed schedule. So if you can't schedule your appointment in advance, uh, you know how to manage your time. You can save 10 minutes here, 10 minutes Starbucks, even a call to your professor. So you have time to, to move around the campus without the need of being stuck there in the waiting room uh, with many, many persons. And they also appreciate all the different ways to access the queue. Uh, of course, the most popular that we have here today is the QR code. So just with a mobile phone, they can scan the QR code, join the line, and send different type of comments like, uh, I need more time, you text a number, you have more time, and cancel the, the appointment, leave the, the line. It's kind of gives some kind of uh, flexibilities. And uh, yes, we, we had uh, many, many feedbacks from the students, and it's, it was really uh, positive uh, in general. And uh, maybe one specific features uh, feature that they really like is the fact that you are informed um, a certain amount of time before uh, you reach the front of the line. So the, the system sends you an SMS and you know that you need to move towards the, the info services um, desk in order to, to, to have your services. And um, on the employee side, um, the, the system is really flexible. So for example, we can uh, rename a queue if we need to, we can create a new one. It is done pretty fast and even changing default setting like the waiting time, uh, open, close um, a queue. This is things that are really done pretty quickly with uh, within the customer engagement center, CSC. I believe Kelly is gonna give you a demonstration um, after here. And this is really friendly. And one important feature is also the, the AI forecast, which has, um, which has helped very much during uh, the peak period in uh, January. Um, I remember chatting with my colleagues, Leon, I think it was September the 9th, and we have uh, about five, we have already served about uh, 500 students, and we also had another 100 still waiting in the queue, and the AR forecast was able to determine that with the resources that we have, the number of employees that we have, we won't be able to serve everyone. So at some point it closed the queue automatically. Uh, it did that a few times actually. So we know at some point that in order to, uh, to be transparent with the students, we can inform them in advance, okay, we won't be able to serve everyone today. Uh, can you come back another day? So this is the kind of thing that we, uh, the, the AR forecast was able to, 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 to achieve. And um, also it is very easy for an employee to transfer a, cl a client from one queue to another. Um, this is very helpful. And of course, the, the tool for the customer, manage, uh, customer flow management was standardized throughout the university uh, within every services. And this is something that the, the clients, the student really, really appreciated. And um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much my testimony and that's, QLS um, really helped us, and uh, yeah, I think I'm, I think that it will be uh, um, a good tool for anybody out there who have uh, those kind of needs. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Christian. Give it back to Ian. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Christian. Um, that was really uh, insightful, Christian, and um, very important as well that your experience is shared um, with the amount of students that you do see at Info Service. Um, the, we have, so we have this count, just to give you an idea of December 20th, 
2020 to November 2021. Um, these are the locations that we are currently live with. So some are faculties and we've onboarded uh, services such as info service and card services. You can see the amount of uh, the interactions. Now, this is not the full, full count uh, just because we've had changes from virtual to in-person queues. And so um, some of the counts are probably higher uh, at this point, but it does give you an idea of the amount of interactions we've had with Qless, uh, which is, is impressive, which is totally impressive. So our key observations from implementing this throughout our locations and services. Um, so we realized that our strong buy-in from all parties involved from the beginning and throughout the project was essential and continues to be essential. Um, our communication with Christian and his service uh, was continuous and it was accessible and having a strong partner like Christian in his service enabled us to to implement a successful uh, implementation of the platform. Uh, so strong buying, totally, totally get it from the beginning and continue it strongly throughout your process. And that is key. Um, the openness of our faculties to change and adapt quickly was remarkable. Uh, the pandemic did help to create that openness to change uh, and continues to do so as well. Um, again, the pandemic forced us you know, uh, forced a new service model on us much quicker than it would normally. I mean, this is this is a vision that we had from a long time ago. Um, the pandemic just accelerated it. Um, the flexibility and deployment, meeting everybody's needs and not imposing a timeline or a solution on them was also critical. So Christian did refer to that in terms of um, our uh, locations have different configurations. However, it's important to note as well that we, as much as possible, want to keep the student experience consistent throughout our locations so that if you go to the Faculty of Arts as a student, but you need to go to Info Service using QLIS, the experience is the same, basically the same. So it's not like you're they're, they're having an, an interface that's completely different or a process that's completely different. So this was key as well to enhancing the student experience. Next, moving forward. So our next steps, where we are today. So we are moving to a hybrid model. Um, so during summer, I was mentioning that now the faculties are thinking we might have to go back on campus in person, service students in person, maybe not full time yet, but how do we keep uh, a, a, the virtual mode and adapt to an in-person mode as well using QLIS when we reopen physically the campus. So we are adopting a bimodal teaching and learning approach at the university and as well to support that bimodal uh, virtual queue uh, approach as well. Um, we are expanding to our other services and faculties. So right now we are deploying our graduate studies offices. We are looking at deploying uh, other services such as OneCard and financial aid and resources uh, and awards. And we're continuing to get a lot of interest from other services and faculties that are getting to know about QLIS or the students are asking about QLIS. And so they're reaching out to us, which is a really, really good sign and they wanna onboard. So we're continuing to meet with them to define their requirements, understand their processes. And if there's a need for uh, QLIS in their, in their faculty uh, faculties or services. And, and some there sometimes it's just the traffic is not there. Um, so there's not really a great need for them and that's fine, they will come back to us at a later time if they feel that they want to onboard onto the platform. So it, we're very flexible with them. We're not forcing this platform on anyone. Uh, we want them to be able to come to us and, and say, okay, now we're ready. Um, and the next steps are also to leverage data for a consolidated view across the university. So Kelly, we mentioned about the data, you know, that we have, that we're faced with in higher education. So uh, ideally we want to leverage data uh, in a consolidated view to support all the services uh, that we offer to the students. And we're continuing to support social distancing guidelines. So QLIS is allowing us and, and, and making it easier uh, for us to be able to support those guidelines. And we work, we are, 
currently working with QLIS to customize the mobile app. Since we're a bilingual university, our mandate is to support both languages. And so all of our tools and services have to be offered in both languages. And we're also continuing uh, working with QLIS on a better integration with Office 365 staff calendars. Um, that is continuous work as well. Uh, this is my part. So thank you very much for listening to Christian and I from the University of Ottawa. Um, I also want to mention that um, if you have any questions, and I'll, I'll let you get into it, Kelly, um, I just I, I want to present Paul Mercier, which is the manager at the University of Ottawa responsible for this project, Véronique Tardif, who is also the business, um, our business client. Uh, she was uh, pivotal in um, uh, helping us organize all these deployments and, and meet with the clients and faculties uh, to assess their needs. And also Kavina Bowie, which is the application manager on this project as well. Those are my colleagues, uh, as long, uh, along with uh, Christian from the University of Ottawa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone from University of Ottawa. I really appreciate that. Um, what I'd like to do now is just do a quick demo of QLIS. I think that might be helpful. Um, I didn't say this earlier and I meant to, so forgive me, but if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A and we will get to them after this next few minutes. I'm just going to walk you through a couple interfaces and then we'll address any questions. Okay, so as I mentioned, QLIS has a variety of ways for students to be able to join a queue. Oh, University of Ottawa, Christian was talking about using QR codes. This is certainly something that a lot of universities and colleges started to do when COVID hit. Uh, we certainly have the standard lobby kiosk uh, where people would walk into some sort of a tablet, maybe start to enter information and join a queue that way. Well, nobody wanted to really do that given that everyone was a common device that people would have to touch and it's a sanitation problem. So we moved to QR codes. If any of us learned anything out of the pandemic, it was how to use a QR code, right? So this has got a huge success. Um, I would encourage all of you guys to just go ahead and scan this onto your phones if you'd like. This will take you right to a kiosk. You'll see that it's mobile responsive and you can go ahead and play with it. It's just a test site. You're not gonna be joining Mount Royal University, um, but you can go ahead and play with it and see what that looks like for students. So a QR code is certainly one of the ways that um, students can join. But let's take a look and go back to the lobby kiosk. Again, typically it's a tablet. The good news is that we're hardware agnostic. So we don't have proprietary hardware. You're not getting into the business of purchasing equipment from QLIS. Most of our partners use tablets. Really, that's completely up to you. Um, this, of course, is all branded. And I'm just going to walk you through here. I'm going to join the line myself and let you see what this looks like. So I'm going to touch the screen to start. We're always going to ask for the cell phone number. That's our method of notification. The next couple screens that you're gonna see are the configurable parts. You know, do you want first name, last name, perhaps a student ID? Those are all options for you. Student ID is being requested here in our demo piece. Then this is important and it's been touched on quite a bit in our session today, but I, I like that this kind of brings it very clear for you is that and this all was because of COVID, is traditionally QLIS was a platform that was designed to queue people for in-person visits. Well, nobody had in-person visits anymore. So we quickly learned that's okay. What we do, forecasting and being able to tell a student it's gonna be this long before it's your turn so you don't have to sit in a Zoom meeting waiting room um, or sit on hold to try to speak to someone on the phone, you can join these callback queues or these virtual queues. So keep that in mind, we support any type of interaction. I'm gonna say in person here. So here are some various queues. I'll say I wanna to go to financial aid. Why do I wanna go financial to financial aid? This is important. These are quite generic for demo purposes, so don't focus so much on that. But this would be populated with all of your service types in your area, so a student can identify what it is specifically they wanna to speak to you about. This is helpful for us for really two reasons. One is because it's tied to the data, right? These are the number of students that you see and the nature of those visits. But also the text messages that QList sends are customizable. And that's a really important piece of what we do. Oftentimes it might have a lot to do with why they wanna to speak to you. 
So if a student said, let's just use an example of FAFSA help. The response back from QList will of course give them the wait time, but it may give information about FAFSA. It may say instructions to make sure they bring something, any kind of reminder. Um, some universities now are using those custom texts to include their COVID guidelines. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Anything you wanna say to better prepare students, we can do that in the text. So I'll say financial aid, that's it. I'm in line, I just got my text message just by using the lobby kiosk. I'm also gonna just quickly show a monitor interface. So this is not a mandatory required piece of QList at all, but it is a way for you to show publicly in your um, physical locations what is happening with the queues. So if I was a student and I knew I needed to see financial aid, I'm walking by, I could see, okay, it's gonna be an hour, should I join? or not, so they can see the total experience if they were next to join and also seeing themselves and how they're moving up into the queue. Everybody is always identified with the last four digits of their phone number, unless they're not gonna use their phone, which is very, very rare. But nonetheless, we have always been intentional about making sure any student with or without a phone could use QList. In that case, they would use their name and then they're identified with their first name, last initial, or you could even give them a unique identifier. So these displays just need to be internet enabled to be able to show the cues. And then I'll pop over real quick to the staff interface. Christian mentioned the CEC, Customer Engagement Center. That's what we call this. This is the back end. This is the staff interface accessible through any standard browser. So your staff could have this up on a tablet if they're gonna be mobile that day or of course up on their PC at their workstation. But here's everybody that has joined the queue. Um, it looks like maybe somebody did that, uh, maybe from the QR code, I'm not sure. Um, but so when you can, you get you know a lot of metadata here around the students based on what you're collecting. If you're getting first name, last name, student ID, maybe an email address, the type of visit, this is a virtual meeting, this is in-person. Sometimes colleges will break up those types of visits and have separate queues for them based on your staffing and your resources. So you may have financial aid virtual queue, financial aid in-person queue. Those are all configuration options. Based, some of these colors, I'll just quickly describe that because you may be wondering. These are just status bars. Quick, quick heads up for your staff to understand what is happening with the students that are in my line. Most commonly you'll see green, those students are within their wait time ready to be seen. When they see a red, what that means is this person is waiting longer than they were forecasted. So good information to have if you wanna mention it to them when you do see them. You can see my forecast was 10 minutes, but I've been in line for 48. That's what that's telling you. When you click on a student too, you get additional information such as the last time they were there, okay? Basic functionality is really straightforward. When you're ready to see a student, you're gonna hit the summon student button. Oh, I thought I was already logged in, sorry about that. So the text message goes out to that student saying, we're ready to see you and gives very specific instructions. If it's in person, we're ready for you, please come to this location. Or it's time for your virtual meeting, here's the link, join now. Or a member from our team is calling you back, please be ready. Right, so all three of those work a little bit differently, but yet in the same platform. Then when the meeting starts, the student arrives, you mark them as arrived. It's really that simple. Summoning, so the notification goes out, marking them as arrived. So now Culus can start to track this service time. That again is really key for us to be able to forecast as effectively as we do. So we're tracking this visit. And then there's a couple different options to move to the next student, but I wanna show a couple. One is to requeue. That's been referred to a couple of times on the call today. Requeuing is used a lot in higher education. And so it's if you're working with a student and they now need to go somewhere else, whether that's for secondary service, maybe it's customer service escalation, it could be a number of reasons, you can help them do that. So I'm going to requeue Kelly. I'll say, well, it's going to send her to admissions and I'm just going to add her. And so now she's gone and she's over in the admissions queue here. What's nice is you can also add a note to tell maybe admissions needs what's been completed, what is the next step, what needs to happen. So everybody is communicating kind of behind the scenes as the student is seamlessly being transferred to another queue. Okay, so that's one option. 
I'll summon this QList test, mark them as arrived. Then the other option is you can end the service manually here. And then you also have the opportunity to collect a service result. Um, and again, these are very vanilla for demo purposes. I've seen the service results for Ottawa and they're, it's quite an extensive window. So anything that you would wanna put there. So your staff is now tracking, these are the things that we completed together. And that will of course be in your reporting. So those are kind of the basics of the CEC, or you can continue to just summon and summon through your queue. It will end your previous visits if you're during your, during your peak times. So that is it for a demonstration. I would love to open it up to questions. I'm going to pull up the Q&A tab and start to manage those. Okay, let's see, the first one. How does the transaction happen for a student who is speaking with one department and is transferred to another area? Does the student have to wait in another line or will they be immediately seen? So that's a really great question. I'm just gonna answer these out loud as opposed to typing them individually. Um, it's up to you. Um, and I think, or maybe Paul is answering the question. Paul, if you wanna jump in here, you're certainly welcome to. No, no, sorry, I clicked on the wrong button. Go ahead. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry about um, that. No, 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 that's okay. It's up to you guys. You can certainly prioritize a student when you transfer them to say, I wanna put them at the front. You can also pull students out of order. So out of this list here of these four students, I could pull Kelly first and say, I wanna see her now. So you could put them at the back of the line, make them to continue to wait, not a very desirable option. Or of course you can prioritize them. Okay, when students sign up for a certain service, are they able to sign up for multiple offices at once or do they need to sign in again to get in line for a separate service? No, they can join multiple queues at one time if you allow that functionality. So if I knew tomorrow I needed to speak to an advisor and financial aid, I could join both lines simultaneously. The way that that happens is I'm going to be called to the one I reached the front of first. And instead of these red or green, that student becomes gray in that second queue. And then your staff knows that person's being helped somewhere else. So when you summon out of this existing queue, they continue to be skipped until they're finished with that queue that they're being helped in. Then they turn green again and become re-eligible for service there. It's pretty dynamic, very, very cool. But yes, they can do that. Does QList have any auditory capabilities for neurodiverse students? Yes, so from the monitor um, that I showed, I can pull that back up. There can be an audible component here. So when you summon a student, in fact, I'll show that really quick. Summon a student and I'll bring that up. So you can see this visual, um, the student can see that it's now my turn. Typically they're getting those notifications on their phone, but there also could be an audible component to let them know it's now your turn and this is where we would like you to go. Okay, how do we implement the daily scene functionality to develop reports for a scheduled email? There is documentation, Shelley, and you may be an existing client, I'm thinking that you are. So we can get you in touch with your client success manager and they will get that process started for you to add the daily scene. Um, could you please show us how to move students? I think I did that. Okay, so I think I already showed how to move a student. Um, does QList interface with staff calendars as to their availability for an appointment? How would this work with international students who may not have, oh wait. Okay, I'm combining two questions, hang on. Um, so yes, we do. So we're integrated with Office 365. Um, there is a QList calendar interface where your staff, either the resources themselves or your managers will go in and say, you know, these are the blocks of times or days that we're available by appointment. Given what QList knows about that, let's say it's only Mondays from nine to 12, you're doing appointments. Then we will look at that staff's calendar from nine to 12 and see if there's an availability to display to the student to choose as an option. Hopefully that helps answer that question. You mentioned students can receive texts with specific instructions. How would this work? International students. So we've not had, I'm not sure, maybe that will, I'll give that to University of Ottawa. Um, to my knowledge, the international numbers are working just like any other, but does anybody from Ottawa wanna maybe answer that if, it's, if possible? Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I can go ahead with this one. So, um, so if an international student is in person, um, when they arrive and they still don't have a Canadian number, so of course they're gonna have to look at the screen or um, an employee can just walk to, straight to them when it is their turn. Uh, when Kelly was showing the CEC, she shows that there is a possibility of uh, putting a, 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 a note to say that, okay, uh, those are the instructions for this specific student. Uh, usually at, your, uh, at Info Service, what we do, we say, that, okay, this person doesn't have a phone. So when it is the, uh, the, his turn, so we can go straight, them to, straight to them to help them. But if they are, out of the country, what we do is that um, when they, they they log in, they also have an, the possibility to, to leave their email. So with the email, we can either uh, uh, reply back, let them know, okay, um, we're gonna give you a call via uh, Teams or I don't know, whatever other uh, at, uh, tool that we have. But uh, um, I have seen like, uh, students in the U.S. and um, some in Morocco, they were able to receive the text message, but I haven't tried with um, some other countries. But yes, a few countries, they are able to receive the text message as well. Thank you, Christian. Um, I see there's another question for Ottawa. Uh, of the nine faculties implemented so far, does each one manager, oh, it looks like Kavina is typing an answer to that. Um, so I'm not sure, Kavina, if you wanna to continue to type that answer, if we wanna say it out loud, I can't really see what you're doing. That's okay, I'll, I'll say it out loud. Okay. Um, so, so essentially all nine faculties uh, manage their own setup. Uh, we do have an operational support team that's able to provide them with any answers that they need if they're not able to configure it in the system themselves, or if there's a bug or an issue, then we would coordinate, uh, we would coordinate that with QLIS. So we, QLIS would have one point of contact, which would be our operations team, and the faculties would have one point of contact, which would be the same operations team. Perfect. Thank you, Kavina. I'm gonna go back up. We have another question about appointments. These are usually the ones that have a lot of the questions. When using appointments instead of walk-ins, how can we add a walk-in if there are no appointments available? It sounds kind of like a trick question, but so if you're using appointments and you're also doing walk-ins, then we allow the space for that. That we say, okay, if you're allowing for walk-ins, then we have room. Um, or you can have appointment only queues or walk-in only queues if that makes sense. If it's appointment only and all of your appointments are taken for the day, then there won't be any left for them to book, of course. Um, but when you're doing it with both combined, there's always availability for students to be able to walk in, the more limited appointment hours. Okay, I'm not sure what I missed. There's one from Brian. Do we have the ability to create our own reports and add them to QLIS for other staff members to use, or do we need to submit a ticket or a report to be added to QLIS? So that depends. Um, you know, QLIS has many, many different canned reports that can be manipulated to, you know, amount to several different um, reports. So if you're talking about outside of the standard reporting interface, such as a, a custom or an ad hoc report, that would be something that you would go to QLIS for. We would have to create that. Um, the daily scene is the new one, and that's something that we just would simply talk to your client success manager about and get that added to your service. Hopefully that helps with that. Um, let's see, how are we doing with questions, I think? I think we've answered everything. Um, if anybody else thinks I've missed something, please let me know. This has been wonderful. I can't thank you all enough from University of Ottawa. Um, and of course, all of you for joining. It was a pleasure sharing with this, or this with you today. Would be happy to share a personalized demo with anyone if you're so inclined. Thank you again. Thank you. Four minutes if someone wants to add thank a Thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you, Paul. No problem.